how he's feeling, dear. Your wife will be up to see you just as soon as I get some information from her. Show him to his room. Right this way, Mrs. Anderson. What's the matter with my husband, Doctor? I can't answer that question until a more thorough examination is made. Tell me, Mrs. Anderson, how long has your husband had this high fever? About two days. He's beginning to show a rash, and in a man his age, it could be a rickettsial disease. Do you live in a tick-infested area? No. Then you recall at any time in the past three to ten days that he could have been bitten by a tick? Why, yes. Last weekend, we went to the mountains with friends and spent most of the day in the woods. The next morning, when Raph was shaving, he noticed a tick on his shoulder. He pulled it off and killed it, and we didn't think any more about it. But what is a tick to do with his being sick? What do you think it is, Doctor? Well, it appears to be Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And if it is spotted fever, it was probably transmitted by the bite of that tick. A tick bite? I didn't know ticks carried disease to humans. Good morning, Mrs. Anderson. Good morning, Doctor. And how are you today? Just fine. I think you can go home today. Your temperature is back to normal, and the antibiotics uh, you received stopped the rash before it got started good. You know, before we had this treatment, spotted fever was a much feared disease. Spotted fever is not as feared as it once was, but it can cause a severe rash beginning on the extremities and spreading over the entire body, along with a high fever, rapid pulse rate, chills, headaches, and abdominal discomfort. The tick is of particular importance as a carrier of a number of diseases from one host to another. Tick paralysis is a disease of humans and animals, causing paralysis of the motor and sensory nerves. To produce paralysis, the tick must remain attached from three to five days. It should be removed immediately upon discovery. A suitable disinfectant will minimize the danger of secondary infection. Dramatic recovery occurs within hours after removal of the tick. Tularemia, another disease transmitted by ticks, occurs throughout North America every month of the year, especially during the rabbit hunting season and among rural populations. Man usually contacts the infectious bacteria by dressing, eating, or conducting laboratory experiments on rabbits. The bacteria are transmitted to man and among wild animals by the bites of infected flies and wood ticks. There is frequently an ulcer at the point of contact or tick bite. The sudden onset of tularemia, along with pain, chills, and fever, is usually accompanied by inflammation and swelling of the regional lymph nodes, which often suppurate and require incision. Another tick-borne disease is Colorado tick fever. Although fatality is rare, the symptoms can be severe, including high temperature and rapid pulse rate. conjunctivitis and aversion to light, severe malaise, headache, chills, and backache. This is a virus disorder which may resemble dengue, encephalitis, or hemorrhagic fever. It is confined primarily to certain of the western states, and its vector is also the Rocky Mountain wood tick. Colorado tick fever is usually briefly remittent and followed by a second bout of fever.
This is in contrast to relapsing fever, which has five or six relapses of fever and illness, as the name implies. It is found mostly in the western United States and is transmitted by the soft tick, Ornithodorus. Wild rodents are the reservoir for many of the tick-borne diseases. The tick is an arthropod. It subsists entirely on the blood of vertebrates, especially of warm-blooded mammals. Its body is strongly flattened from top to bottom. And it breathes by means of a pair of spiracles, one located on each side, immediately behind the last pair of legs. Ticks have eight legs instead of six, as found in insects. No wings and no antennae. The legs terminate with sharp hooks, which enable it to cling to its host. Special soft pads, or pulvilli, enable it to cling to smooth surfaces and to walk undetected over an animal's body. Its head and body are so fused together that it has no true head, thorax, or abdomen as insects have. Attached at the anterior end is the capitulum, bearing the mouth parts. The mouth parts consist of paired chelicerae in the center, a toothed hypostome left of center, and two palpi shown on each side. The chelicerae make the incision with the terminal cutting digits at the top. The hypostome helps the tick to force its mouth parts into the host's skin to reach the blood supply and to maintain its hold on the host during engorgement. Ticks are divided into two groups or families, the hard ticks and the soft ticks. Soft ticks can be identified by their soft leathery covering of the body. which extends over the mouth part shown at the upper left. Their mouth parts can be seen only from the underside. Soft ticks usually live in nests of host animals and birds, or in rocks and crevices in the structures on which the nests are placed. They also differ from hard ticks in that they do not engorge for long periods or remain on the host when it leaves its nest. The soft tick bites and retires quickly to its nest and lays eggs in numerous small batches rather than in one large one as the hard tick. In the United States, the hard ticks include the common wood tick. most abundant in regions of low, brushy vegetation of the western states. The American dog tick, found on dogs and other carnivores and small rodents, mostly east of the Rockies. The lone star tick, found in the southeastern region of the United States. and the brown dog tick. This tick is a household pest feeding upon dogs, but rarely biting humans. They are probably found in homes throughout the United States. All hard ticks can be identified easily by their tough body covering, the conspicuous shield on the top side, and the mouth parts, which extend beyond the front end of the body and can be seen from above. All species of ticks pass through four stages, the eggs, the 
larvae or seed ticks. The nymphs. And the adults. This cycle may take up to two years or more. Since the life histories of different tick species vary so much, this is about the only general inclusive statement that can be made about them. The female hard tick lays from 5,000 to 9,000 eggs and then dies. The eggs hatch into six-legged larvae or seed ticks. These have very small mouth parts. and must engorge upon small, thin-skinned animals, as shown around this ground squirrel's eye and ear. Then they drop off and molt, and emerge as nymphs with eight legs. These nymphs engorge, drop off, molt, and emerge as sexually mature adult ticks. The adult will await a third host, which is usually this time, large thick-skinned animals like cattle or horses, and occasionally man. Whenever exposure to tick bites is possible, personal protective measures can be taken. A vaccine for the prevention of Rocky Mountain spotted fever provides varying degrees of immunity to most people. Suitable clothing such as high boots with socks outside the trouser legs should be worn. Certain commonly available insect repellents have also proven of some preventive value. One way of determining the presence and incidence of ticks is by the drag cloth method. This consists of dragging a piece of coarse cloth at least three feet square over the area. Especially over low vegetation, a favorite place for ticks to wait for hosts. The cloth is examined periodically and the ticks collected and counted. When entering an area known or suspected to be infested with ticks, always check clothing and skin periodically and thoroughly while in and after leaving the area. Ticks are removed from the skin by exerting a firm pull in the direction of the capitulum. Care should be taken not to break off the capitulum in the wound. Another way of determining the presence of ticks is to examine all domestic animals in the vicinity. Dusting with chemicals is one method of control. If ticks are found inside the house, appropriate chemical measures should be used. In areas where infestation is heavy, the local health department can use chemical control measures. The application of certain insecticides with mechanical equipment or by hand is very effective when properly mixed and applied. 
Care must be exercised to apply the chemical thoroughly to all vegetation in areas frequented by man. Special attention is given to roads, pathways, and recreational areas. The control of ticks involves environmental as well as chemical control. The cutting of grass and weeds discourages rodent hosts and destroys the vegetation upon which ticks might wait for hosts. If signs indicate heavy infestation of rodents, appropriate control activities should be initiated. The tick is of special public health significance as a carrier of disease to man and animals by the transmission of disease-producing organisms from one host to another. Some of these are Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Tick Paralysis, Tularemia, Colorado tick fever, and relapsing fever. Remember, ticks are divided into two families, the soft ticks and the hard ticks. With all species of ticks passing through four stages, the eggs, larvae or seed ticks, nymphs, and adults. This cycle may take up to two years or more and requires a meal of blood for each stage and for the production of eggs. Although yearly immunizations are usually effective against spotted fever, the best protection against tick-borne diseases is to wear suitable protective clothing and check the skin and clothing thoroughly for the presence of ticks. If these simple protective measures are taken, you too can enjoy the pleasures of the great outdoors without fear of disease from infected ticks. <laughs>